and welcome to the Centric Software Business Finance Training Number One. The training today is 100% about your workflow. The workflow in the Centric Software Platform is the foundation of the software platform. There's all sorts of cool things that you guys can do based on your workflow in the software. Drip email marketing campaigns, automated triggers, task management and automated task triggers, enrollments, automatic status changes. So there's a lot of different things that you can do based on your workflow, which is the reason why it's the very first thing we discuss in the software platform when you come on board as a new customer. Okay, so if you've already gotten access to your brand new Centric Software CRM account, by now it should be fully white labeled to you. So the logo should be your logo and the color should be your color scheme based on your logo. So if you go ahead and come into the software, we click on the contacts tab and then you'll see a button here that says workflow. We're going to go ahead and click on the workflow button here and you'll see here that if you're a business finance customer, you will have an out of the box workflow that we've given you. This is an out of the box workflow that we feel like works really well in the industry based on years of doing this and giving this type of workflow to our clients and then being able to change this workflow or mold this workflow a little more around your business model seems to be very successful. Okay, so this is the workflow we give you out of the box with every single one of our clients. We go over this workflow, we explain best practices of workflow, and then again, we make the uh, certain changes to this workflow to wrap more around your business model. Okay, now first and foremost, it's very important to understand the best practices in building a workflow in a software platform. It actually doesn't matter if it's our software platform or someone else's, but in our software platform, you wanna make sure that you build statuses and stages. Our system works on stages and statuses, so you can see here you've got a stage, for example, lead, opportunity, closed one, and then you've got statuses within these stages. So it's very important to understand that you want to build a workflow based on the status the customer is in and not a task. Okay, so I know this is going to be uh, a, a bit of a learning curve. Uh, however, best practices is creating statuses of the current status the client is in and not on a task. So what I see a lot happen with my customers, our customers here at Centric Software, is they want to build statuses like application signed, application sent, contract signed, contract sent. Those are not statuses. Those are tasks. We have a full task manager built into our software that will you'll be able to see at a later training. A status, for example, if you send an application to a borrower, the status is merchant reviewing application. That is the status. The status the client's currently in is they're reviewing the application that you sent them. If you, someone has signed your application, and the next thing you need to go do is collect documents, the status the client is in is in document collection. If you've sent a file to lenders, let's say you're a broker and you're brokering this deal to different funders, okay, and you send a package to several funders, the status is funder reviewing file. Okay, so again, I know a bit of a learning curve, but it's best practices to make sure that you create that workflow based on statuses and not on tasks. Okay, another very important thing to, wor uh, to think about when it comes to your workflow is you want to make it as simple as you possibly can. Okay, a lot of my clients try to uh, really make it complex. And if you come into their workflow and you look at their workflow, it's like six miles down the page and it's way too difficult, way too complex. Okay, best practices and building out workflows, you guys should be able to hire a, a brand new employee in the industry and they should be able to look at this workflow and they should be able to understand exactly what it means. Okay, if you have someone that you've hired and they've spent time in the industry and they look at your workflow and they haven't the slightest clue what it means or how it operates, you know for a fact your workflow is far too complex. Okay, simplify your workflow as much as you humanly can and then you can build on that workflow over the course of time. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go through this workflow with you guys right now to explain how it works. And then your homework is going to be 
to build a workflow based on this workflow, or maybe you need to add a few stages or a few statuses to really entertain your business model. But let's go ahead and go over this workflow so you understand exactly what it means. The first stage that we have is called lead, and the first status is warm lead. So if you guys have a lead coming from your website, or you have someone that's called you, and someone has literally raised their hand saying, hey, uh, hey lending company, I am very much interested in working with you, that is a warm lead. Someone has raised their hand and said, funding company or brokerage company, I'm interested in working with you. Please call me. Please email me. I want to understand more about your services. Okay, that's warm lead. A cold lead is, let's say, many of you have databases that you come to the table with when you come on board with Centric Software. So let's say you've got a database of 25,000 files. If you upload all 25,000 files into the software platform, every single one of those files is going to be in the status of cold lead. Because at the end of the day, they haven't really raised their hand saying, I'm interested in funding. They're just a database. So they're all cold lead. Okay. Below this, we've got first through sixth attempt. You know, we've always found it a good idea to status out your attempts when you're trying to call out to a particular merchant or borrower. The reason why we like uh, putting attempts in here is because when you change the status to a certain attempt, an automatic email can go out coming from the assigned to sales rep on file to that client automatically when you change the status to first attempt or second attempt or to third attempt. So you guys can create email marketing templates or we've got some consulting packages here at Centric Software and you can hire us to do it. You can create those automatic emails to go out to the client when you change the status. Okay, so we always want to see our attempts. If you guys want to add more attempts in here, seventh attempt, eighth attempt, you can do so. And then the last status in the lead stage is merchant reviewing application. You really don't have an opportunity with a merchant until they've signed your application. And if they haven't signed your application, they're still just a lead. They're just a lead that you're working. Once they've signed your application, now it's an opportunity to uh, potentially get that business owner or that customer funding. Okay, so if you've sent a client or a merchant an application, you're going to change the status to merchant reviewing application. That's the status the client's currying in. Now, let's assume for two seconds that this client signed your application. Okay, the very next thing we all know you have to go do is you have to go start collecting documents. Okay, now let me take a step back real quick. Some of you are direct funders. So we have a lot of brokers on our software platform. We have a lot of syndication partners on our software platform. And we have a lot of brokers on our software platform. So we have funders, brokers, and syndication partners. Okay, so in document collection is more for a broker. So if I've got a signed application, the next thing I need to go do for that borrower is I need to go start collecting documents, tax returns, bank statements, voided check, driver's license. Okay. Now, if you're a funder, and let's assume for two seconds you're a funder that only works with ISOs, so you don't have your, your in-house sales team, the very first status here will be new submission because a broker has essentially sent you a full package and it's a brand new submission. Okay, so moving on to the next status under the opportunity stage is funder reviewing file. Once you guys have collected all the documents on a merchant, you can now send this package off to one lender or multiple lenders. And now the status is funder reviewing file. It doesn't matter if it's five funders or two funders or one funder or 10 funders. Funders are reviewing file. Okay, now the next status here, and you may, ne you may never change your file to this status, but some of you do, is negotiating with funder. So if you've sent a file to a funder or multiple funders, then they send you back a term sheet or some sort of offer proposal letter, maybe you don't like that. Maybe you, it's not enough, the factor rate's a little too high, and you want to go negotiate with that funder, you can change the status to negotiating with funder. Because you never know, that the client may be in this status for a day, for an hour, for a week. It all depends on how quickly those funders get back to you. So some of you may skip this status, but some of you may love this status, okay? Now the next status is merchant reviewing offer. So if a funder has given you a term sheet, you now need to take that offer, that term sheet, and go present it to the borrower, to the merchant, okay? And now the status is merchant reviewing offer. You've presented the offer to the merchant, and they may look over that offer for a week, for a day, for two hours. A lot of people have to go talk to their husband or their wife or their partner or whatever. So the status is merchant reviewing offer. Okay. As we scroll down, we've got offer accepted preparing contracts. 
Okay, now down here under close lost, we've also got lender decline, merchant decline, and write off. So anywhere during this process where it's funder reviewing file, in document collection, uh, merchant reviewing contracts, merchant reviewing offer, you could change the status to close lost, lender decline, or merchant decline. Okay, so obviously if a merchant gets an application or they get an offer and they don't like it and they decline it, you're going to change the status to merchant decline if you can't work with that merchant any further. Okay, so let's assume for two seconds the merchant accepted your offer. So we're going to change the status to offer accepted preparing contracts. Now, depending on the funder, depending on the lender, uh, they may send the contracts with the offer letter or they only send the offer letter. You have to accept the offer letter and then they're going to prepare the contracts to send off to you. Okay, so you can see here we've got one called offer accepted preparing contracts. Okay, then the next one is merchant reviewing contracts. So you now have the contracts from the funder and you need to send these contracts to the borrower for them to review and now it's merchant reviewing contracts. Same concept, the merchant probably has to talk to their wife or their husband or their partner. You never know how long the client could be in this status and we'll go ahead and uh, create one called merchant reviewing contracts, okay? Now, if the client likes the contract, contract signed, final steps. Okay, so the contract, uh, the merchant has signed the contract and maybe there's some final stipulations that you guys have to go collect some final documents, maybe some final things you have to go do and then we can go ahead and push them into funded. If merchant reviewing contracts turns into merchant just doesn't like the contract at all, they're going to decline it, we can scroll down and you've got merchant decline. Okay, so let's go ahead and assume that the contracts were signed final steps. The next status you're going to go into is stage closed one, and we're going to go to funded. We've now funded this client. Once the client's been funded and now you've turned repayment on, you can change the status to in repayment. Let's say the client pays in full. You can change the status to paid in full. Maybe they've defaulted. You can change the status to defaulted. After so many days of defaulted, you want to take them to collections. After so many days of being in collections, uh, maybe they're going to go into legal. They're going to go into your legal department. Okay, so uh, you've got some options here as far as the out-of-the-box workflow we've given you guys for close one. Now, close lost, lender declined, and then merchant declined or write-off. If you've got a client that's gone from defaulted to in collections to in legal, and now you just need to write it off your books, you're no longer going to be collecting money from that client, you're going to go ahead and write it off your books, and you can change the status to write-off. Okay, you've got lender decline and merchant decline. We don't break it down into the reasons why they're declined because that's too complex. That's too many statuses. You guys can create custom fields in our software called reason for decline, and then you can put options there, and you can choose the option within the client's account. Okay, and then last but not least, we've got the nurture stage. And in nurture, we've got future and we've got dark. So nurture is future is let's say the client, you call the, the merchant and they say, you know what? Why don't you call me in three months? Call me in six months. Call me in a year. You're going to change their status to nurture a future, and you're going to either create your own drip email marketing strategy out to everyone in the status of future every month or twice a month or once a week, or again, our consulting packages here at Centric Software will do it for you. You've also got nurture dark. Let's say, for example, you've changed the status to merchant reviewing contracts, and all of a sudden, the client just falls off the face of the map. Right? They're just nowhere to be found. You call, call, call. You email, you email, you email. You have no idea what's going on. It's been weeks. You can change their status to nurture dark. They've gone dark on you essentially. And again, you can set up a drip email marketing strategy to go out to that client reoccurring every two weeks or every week or every month or you know whatever you'd like to do. Okay, so again, this is the out of the box workflow that we've given you that we know works really well in the industry. You may want to come in here and add a few things, take a few things out. It depends if you're a funder, it depends if you're a syndication partner or a broker. But I cannot stress enough that you need to keep this simple, as simple as you possibly can. Over the course of time, if you want to complicate it or you want to add a little more uh, dynamic uh, stages and statuses, you can do so. But in the beginning, do yourself a favor. You want to make sure you keep it very, very simple so that both you and your team and any new people you hire can fully understand how you take a client from the first status all the way to the end status when it comes to paid in full or write-off. Okay, so before you go on to training two, what I'd like you to do today is I'd like you to talk with your team, talk with your partners, talk with your spouse, whoever you need to talk to, and I want you to really think about this workflow because in training number two, we're going to have you map 
your contact statuses to your advanced statuses. In our software, we have statuses for contacts and we have statuses for advances. We map them together so that when you change the status of an advance, the status of the contact changes with it. So you don't have to do it twice. Okay, so put a lot of thought to this, spend 24 hours talking about this, thinking about this, looking at this and coming up with a design and a workflow that you happen to like. Your support rep will review it with you to make sure that you're on the right track. Once you've found a workflow that you really like, you can come in here and you can color code your workflow. For those of you who don't know, these are called hex codes, these are color codes. So you can come in here and you can choose colors for your statuses. I happen to like to color code my statuses based on what I find to be positive or negative. So for example, all my close loss, I make bright red. Okay, all my good things, I make bright green. And then of course, you can use any other color code in between to do so. For example, I make all my uh, attempts an orange color. Okay, so you can come in here and color code your workflow, and then that file will be that color when you look at it in the contacts tab. Okay, so thank you very much for listening to training number one. We wish you the best of luck.